Welcome to Chapter 4 of our video series on creating REST services with OpenEdge. In this section, we're going to learn how to create a web handler. This chapter assumes that you have successfully completed Chapters 1, 2, and 3. A web handler-based REST service gives you more control than you have when creating a data object service using a business entity, as we did in Chapters 2 and 3. When you make a REST call to a web handler, it will analyze the URI that it receives and will automatically map to different operations. This mapping is written using ABL code. In the examples you see here, the first URL will retrieve all talks, and the second will retrieve a single talk with a specific ID. You can see that this simplifies calling of the REST service since the ID is passed as part of the URL instead of in a JSON payload. In Developer Studio, create a new project from the Project Explorer by right-clicking and selecting New, Open Edge Project. You'll see this screen. Enter the name as Web Handler and use the default location. This will be a server project, so click that box. Leave Pass for OpenEdge checked as before, and select Web as the transport. We're not going to create a data object service in this example, so leave that box unchecked. Click Next. We won't change the name of the web app or the module name, so from this screen, click Next. We will call our service WHS for Web Handler Service. The Web Handler will be called Talks Handler, as you see here. We'll specify a URI for the invocation of this service. In later exercises, we will use different resource URIs to call different pieces of code. But for now, we're going to use slash hello as the default URI. Click on the line next to resource URIs that says Web Handler, and click the Edit button to the right of it to change the URI to slash hello. Click Next when you have made these changes. Click Next without making any changes to the AVM and Layout Options screen. As in the previous exercises, we will add the location of our custom code to the ProPath. Click Add Workspace Directory. Find the folder under the Conference API project called Source. Click OK. Select this folder and use Move Up to move it to the top of the ProPath. When you're done, your screen should look like this. Click Next. We're going to connect our conf database to the project so that we can test directly in Developer Studio. You may need to click Show All, but once you have found the conf database, click the box next to it and then click Finish. The new project will be created and our new service will be deployed to Pass OE. Once PassOE shows that it is started and synchronized, open the Chrome web browser and enter the URL as you see here. When you press Enter, the response will be the default message that's created when the wizard creates a web handler. 
Next, we will change our web handler to call ABL business objects for each resource URI that we define. In our examples, we will use existing procedures. We're going to delete the existing WHS service so that we can create a new one. Under Define Services, right-click on the WHS service and choose Delete. PassOE will automatically undeploy this service. Create a new ABL service by right-clicking on the Web Handler project and choosing New and selecting ABL Service. Make sure the transport is set to Web and enter the service name as WHS. Instead of creating a new web handler as we did before, we're going to choose an existing handler that we wrote in advance. Click on the box next to Select Existing, and then click the Browse button to find the code that we want to use. In the Filter Text box, type Talks, and you'll see two choices. Click on the second entry, which refers to the Talks Handler procedure in the conference.si package, and then click OK. This is a pre-built class file that we will call when we receive requests via REST. We'll look at this class file in detail later. With our new customized handler, we can identify customized URIs that will allow us to perform specific operations. For our example, we'll have a URI that will be formatted as slash talks slash talk dash ID in curly braces. This will allow us to return a single record from the talks table based on the talk ID that is passed in. Click Add next to Resource URIs and enter the resource URI as you see here. Click OK. The second URI will simply be slash talks, which will return a complete list of talks in the database table. Click Add again and enter this URI. Click OK. Now we will tell OpenEdge what to do when either of these URIs are passed as a git to our service. Open the Talks Handler class file that we pointed to when we created the new WHS service. It's in the Conference API project under Source, Conference ID, SI. Double-click this file to open it. This file is a customized version of the generic Talks Handler class that's provided. Find the HandleGet method. This method is called whenever a get is sent to the service. This is where you will put the ABL code to deal with different URIs that are passed. Remember, we identified two different URIs that we accept, so we will provide code to handle each of them. Scroll down in the handle get method to the comment line that says slash slash web slash talks slash talk ID. Our customized code to return a single talk record is contained within an if statement that checks that the URI template includes the string slash talks slash talk ID. Just a note, the comment string at the top is not required and is really only there for reference. Inside the if statement, we run read talks.p. This is the same procedure we ran from the data object service in the last chapter. Again, it is in the conference API package under Source, Logic, Talk. This code receives the data from the HTTP request, 
retrieves the parameter passed as the last part of the URI and saves it as talk ID. Then an app server procedure called readtalks.p is instantiated, and then the get single talk procedure is run, passing the talk ID in and returning the talks record in the form of a temp table. To test this call, we'll need to get a valid talk ID. You can do this from Insomnia by executing read talks that we used in the last chapter. Make note of the value of ID in one of the records in the JSON response. If you don't have any talks, use create talk to create several records. Our talks code was deployed automatically to the PASOE app server, so we can test by opening the web handler request section in Insomnia. Select WH get talk and change the ID in the URL to the ID that you got from the query in the last step. Remember in the previous chapter, we passed the ID as part of a JSON payload. In this case, it's part of the URL instead. This shows you one of the basic capabilities of web handlers. After you click Send, you'll see the correct record in the response that is passed back from PassOE. Next, we will implement the code needed in order to make the slash talks URI return a list of all talks in the database table. Back in Developer Studio, in the talks handler code, locate the code under handle git for the slash talks URI. It currently shows only comments that indicate what should be done here. Open the file named custom3.txt from conference API slash conf. Copy this code and paste it over the section of comments in the talkshandler.cls file. When you've done this correctly, it will look like this. Do a save all and a project clean. Choose all projects and click OK. The service will be automatically updated on PassOE, so if you open the Chrome browser and enter the URL as you see here, you'll see a list of talks. You can also use WH Get Talks from Insomnia. You should see the complete list of talk records from the database. This is the same result set you saw in the last chapter because it's calling the same business logic from a different, more customized URL. Next, we'll customize the web handler even further to allow a post operation to create new talks records. Look again at the talks handler class file and find the handle post method. Scroll down to the comment that says slash slash web slash talks pipe post. You'll see that the method is stubbed for you, so all you need to do is add appropriate code. For the post method, we'll require a JSON object that contains the data that's used to create a talk record, and we'll acknowledge the creation in an HTTP header of the response. This will show you how to do even more customization of REST services using the web handler. In the Conference API project, go into conf and find custom4.txt and open it by double-clicking on it. Press Ctrl-A and Ctrl-C to copy the code. Paste the code over the section of code that is commented out in talkshandler.cls by highlighting it and using Control-V. 
This code parses the JSON body into appropriate parameters and then instantiates newtalk.p and calls createtalk in that procedure. This is the same code that we used in the previous chapter. Right click and choose Check Syntax to make sure there are no errors. Then right click and choose Compile. To test this functionality, open Insomnia and select WH Create Talk. Fill in the data for the new talk in the JSON tab and click Send. You won't see any information in the body of the response, but if you look at the header tab in the response area, you'll see the response next to Location. This tells you the assigned talk ID. This header was created in our code. We can see this if we go back and look in talkshandler.cls. You can use Get Talks or WH Read Talks to verify that the new talks record was created from this call. This concludes the chapter on web handlers. In this chapter, we created a web handler service and deployed it to Pass OE. We created customized URI strings to receive a single talk or all talks using Git, and one to create a talk record using POST. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about how to use a document object handler instead of a web handler to create REST services. We will create custom URI strings as we did in this chapter, but instead of using ABL code to map, we'll use a JSON file instead.